so I just got the Keychron Q3. We're going to go ahead and unbox it, talk about it. We're going to look at its stock. We're going to look at it with a couple really quick and easy mods. And I'm also going to change the switches to ones that I prefer. Now, before we get into the unboxing, I just wanted to thank my patron sponsors, anybody who subscribes on Twitch, and anybody who supports the channel in any way. Your support is what allowed me to pick up this keyboard in order to review it. And I really do appreciate it. I hope to do more of these in the future. If you have anything that you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments section or on Discord. And I'm more than happy to take a look at some of those products. Without further ado though, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. All right, we're gonna need a knife. Handy dandy pocket knife. Or I don't want to destroy the box or anything. Oh, okay. Safety third. All right. All right, well, it's a pretty hefty box. We got some nice super closed cell phone there wow all right make sure the pins are pin straights are, are straight switch pins are straight be gentle and make sure to align the pins awesome quick little user guide we'll probably need that after we'll get to the keyboard in a second we got a usb C to USB-C with a USB-C to USB-A adapter on there. And I mean, this isn't the craziest quality cable, but it's nice and braided and it's got a fair core on it. Um, I mean, it's a little stiff, it's a little bit stiff, but you know, it's not too bad. We got some extras of the keys uh, to change it into Windows mode because these are right now in Mac. Got some foam for dampening. Two little rubber domes. Don't know what those are for. And we got extra screws. Anything else in there? No. Nope. All right. Time for the keyboard. Oh, man, this thing weighs a lot. And a nice little quick start guide at the bottom. All right. So we open this thing up. This thing is hefty. So we've got our USB-C, we've got our Mac Windows switch. So let's switch that over to Windows. We've got eight screws on the bottom. I guess those domes are replacements for these. Not sure. Um, but eight hex screws on the bottom. Open up the case, which we will be doing. I got the knob version. Um, I originally wanted the other colorway where it was the black keys and then the blue accent keys, but they didn't have it at the time and I was going to replace them anyway, so I thought may as well. But yeah, this thing is heavy. Let me go get a scale. All right, well, don't mind my busted up scale because um, I use it for all my 3D prints. Let's get that on there. So that is 2,004 grams. So that's two kilos. That is a hefty, hefty keyboard. And you know, a lot of the, a lot of the custom board people may not think that's so like super heavy, but for a manufacturer board, it's pretty hefty. And they didn't charge me too much in shipping, honestly. Uh, considering how much this thing weighs. So I got this with the Gateron G Pro Browns. Um, I do feel like I'll probably end up switching these out for the Cali Box Whites that I'm using now because I really like them. But I'm going to give the Browns a little bit of a chance here. Uh, we will do some sound tests. Come on. You can, you can get out of there. There you go. Um, we're going to do some sound tests pre and post um, switch change and 
uh, keycap change as well as a couple quick mods that we're going to end up doing here. Yeah, see, it sounds a little pingy on certain keys. Certain keys sound pretty good, like the shift sounds pretty good. Get a little bit of the pinginess in the space bar. Definitely get it in the backspace. Get a little bit in the enter. And you get it in a few of the other keys, but... I mean, I'm interested in trying this out and playing around with it and seeing how it goes. So, let's uh, get into that. So we are going to start by testing the keyboard entirely stock, no switch change, no keycap change, no mods or anything like that, entirely stock. Now here's just a really quick demonstration of the gasket mounts on the keyboard. They make it sound great, they make it feel great. I'm honestly pretty happy with the way they did these gaskets. I've never actually had gaskets on any of my keyboards before. So with pricing, the Keychron Q3 has a few options. So you have the fully assembled knob, which is what I have here. That is $184 right now. I think this is the early bird pricing. They're gonna go up to 194. Without the knob, it's 174 and then it's going to go up to 184. If you want to get bare boned with no knob, 154, it's going to be 164. Bare boned with the knob, 164, it's going to be 174. There's also three color options there's carbon black, silver gray, and navy blue. And if you get the fully assembled, they each have an A and B version with the keycap colors kind of opposite of one another. Now, in terms of build, this thing is built like a tank. Like I mentioned in the unboxing, it is two kilograms, which is a very hefty board, especially for someone like me who has never had like an actual custom board or anything like that. This is very, very heavy. I have all metal boards and they're not nearly this, this uh, hefty. This is a fully CNC aluminum body. It has a double gasket design, and they also give you an additional set of gaskets that you can use to increase um, how much movement there is in the keyboard. You have hot swappable switches that are that also have self-facing RGB, so you don't have to deal with any of that interference. They have the Keychron OSA PBD keycaps, which is great. So these switches are installed into a metal plate and they are going to be having some options for different plate materials coming up soon. They're just having issues with supply as far as I'm aware. Beneath that plate is a sound absorbing foam, which is very, very thick. If you feel like your keyboard's a little bit too muted when you get it, you can remove this foam and kind of get a little bit more, you know, dynamic sound back from it. But personally, I felt it was a little too pingy when I removed it. Obviously, one of the big features on the one that I got particularly is the knob and I particularly got the knob because I wanted a keyboard that had an interesting feature on it. I've never had a keyboard with a knob. I had been looking at the glorious GMMK Pro for a long time and you know I think I'll find some pretty good use out of this knob and I you know just thought I'd get something unique. So the keyboard is entirely QMK supported and it's also available in VIA although the VIA key mapping isn't officially on the GitHub yet, you can download the via key map directly from Keychron right now. Now the switches that come in here stock are the Gateron G Pros if you get the fully assembled board. They're a very good switch. Um, you have the option of red, blue, or brown, and I got brown in here. 
Um, I got Browns because they're a good middle ground between gaming and typing. And I wanted to be able to have something. I don't have any brown hot swappable switches on me, so that was just a good way for me to get a set. The stabilizers are screw-ins, which is really nice. It gives you a lot of opportunity there. Once we take it apart, we're gonna end up seeing how well they're lubed, because they are supposed to be factory lubed. But I have seen some people say that the factory lubing is very mediocre, so we'll have to take a look at that. So as for the mods that we're gonna try, I am going to do the quick tape mod, which is just applying some masking tape to the backside of the PCB. Um, that's supposed to help reduce a lot of the pinginess that you heard in that stock sound test. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna do a quick little tape mod in between the top and bottom plates to help remove pinginess as well from the two plates uh, contacting each other. We're gonna go ahead and try that again with the stock switches and stop keycaps. And then I'm going to switch out the switches and keycaps with some Calibox whites and halos that I have from my other keyboard and my drop control keycaps that I like. They have shine through RGB and I personally am not a fan of the blue the blue keycaps on here. So I want to have like an all black and gray kind of theme. All right, so I forgot to press record while taking out all the screws, but it's just eight screws, very simple. They give you the hex key for that once I actually found out that they were underneath the quick guide. And if you take off this bottom plate, this is definitely where a lot of the weight is. Very thick piece of aluminum here. You have a very, very, very thin piece of foam. And then you also have an anti-static sheet under here that uh, is also anti-conductive so that the PCB doesn't short out on the aluminum. So that's nice. Uh, we're not going to change this out at all. Then we have our PCB. There's one little tiny cable to disconnect. And I believe that's for... Yeah, that's just for the connection, the power connection. So pretty straightforward. Um, we're not going to need to do that. But you can also see here that um, you can see the gaskets. So they give you six extra gaskets. You can add a gasket up here. Um, you can also add gaskets on the backside, um, but I'm, I don't feel like taking apart this. I'm not gonna do anything with that right now anyways. And as you can see, they have these little silicone pieces here to help kind of force break the two halves um, from touching and getting too pingy, but it doesn't seem like they work all that great. So we're gonna add some additional tape there to help separate the two halves. And we're also gonna apply masking tape towards the entire back. All right, so we got our tape mod done. Um, cut a little hole out for the ribbon to go back in, so that's awesome. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a little bit of tape to these sections right here. Um, and we're basically wherever the silicone is, just to help uh, create a force break there to ensure that the two pieces of the board aren't really touching.
All right, so we've got all of our tape on there. And let's see if she closes. All right, so if you guys were to do the force break mod, I would highly suggest putting the tape on the bottom plate instead of the top plate so that you don't get the tape being a little bit visible. Um, I will probably end up changing that up. Ooh, but the pinginess does sound much better. So let's go ahead and do an actual sound test. All right, so we move the tape on the sides to the bottom plate so that they're not visible. And uh, let's go ahead and test it out. So now we're gonna go ahead, pull all these keycaps off, pull all the switches out and switch them with the switches and keycaps I have on my drop control. So now that we've got all the keycaps off, we can kind of take a look at this top plate here. You have the reset switch right in there. Um, what people have said about the stabilizers does seem to be true, where only the corners of the stabilizer seem to be uh, lubricated. So as you can see there, the lube is literally just in the corners and uh, nowhere else. So if I end up finding that to be an issue for me, I will probably take this apart and fully lube the stabilizers. I'm not that far into being a keyboard enthusiast yet, so I don't think I'm going to need that at the moment. Let's go ahead and take all these switches off and get them swapped over. So like I had in the drop control, we're going to end up putting the box whites and the entire main body here, and then the pandas will go on this side and the function row, and then we'll have one blue box switch being the escape key. All right, my fingers are extremely sore, but we got all of our switches in. So this is our layout here. We have Calibox whites and all of the main switches and the arrow keys. We have some halos up in the function row and the home cluster. And then we got one random blue box up in the escape key. With that, it's time to throw all of my other keycaps on. Now we've got the new switches and keycaps on, so let's go ahead and do a new sound test with the that change as well as the previous mods.
Now, since getting my Q3, they have released a Q4, which is a 60%, a Q5, which is a compact full keyboard, and also the Q6, which is a standard full keyboard. Now, these all have the same build quality and build styles as a Q3 here, but they're in different form factors. Um, if you would like me to cover any of these, let me know. Uh, I currently don't have the funds to get one. But once I do, I would love to cover them. I'm currently really, really enjoying the TKL form factor, um, but I do love full size keyboards as well. And that's typically what I would use for work. Um, so let me know. But these are all have since been released since getting my Q3. They were not out before that. And Keychron is just continuing to bring the heavy mechanical enthusiast level qualities and features to the, you know, mass manufacturing market, which is awesome to see. And hopefully because of that, we start to see more companies doing the same. So as I mentioned, the key mapping for the Q3 is not yet available on the via GitHub and not approved. So the via software doesn't recognize it right away. So what you have to do is you have to go to the settings. You have to make sure that show design tab is on. And then on the Q3 page, you will see a download for the via JSON key map. So make sure you download that. Once you do and you have it unzipped, you're just gonna go ahead and go back to the design that you just unlocked with that setting. And then you're gonna drag this over there. And now you have full access to your keyboard via, uh, via via. And you can do all kinds of great custom controls on here. You can do custom macros. You can add a whole bunch of layers. You could do lighting. Um, you can do a lot of great things. First thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the Siri or Cortana button. And we're gonna change that to pause. Um, we're gonna put scroll lock back on. We're gonna make this more of a regular style keyboard. Um, but yeah, VM makes things super, super simple. And you know, I love the fact that Keychron is supporting VIA as much as possible. And that's it. I really hoped you enjoyed the review of the Q3. I'm really excited to use this keyboard. I was originally looking at another keyboard like the GMMK Pro um, or even the Q1, but the Q3 is in my favorite size, which is TKL. And everything about it right now, I'm really, really enjoying it. I it's going to ruin all other keyboards for me personally. I don't think I'll be able to go back to my drop control or anything like that. The sound and the feel of this thing are just leaps and bounds above everything else I've ever used. It is more expensive than most of the other, uh, other keyboards I've also used. So I got to take that into consideration, but it is an incredible keyboard. I feel like this thing's going to last me a long time and I'm super happy with my purchase. If you did enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or suggestions for keycaps, switches, or other keyboards you'd like me to check out, go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below. I'd like to thank my patron sponsors, Rojo Son of Dojo, Thought Slime, and Step Back, and I'd also like to thank you for watching the end of the video. Feel free to check out my keyboard recommendation video if you'd like to know on, you know, what kind of things you should look for when trying to buy a keyboard. But as always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you next Friday.